wish you were Billy Sheehan. I do do a groove and he plays the leads. Okay, well you can you can do it. I'll do it. I'll take some. I'll oh, okay, I'm, I'm no good yeah. at doing That's this. That's okay. I, cool. I, you you lay down a groove and. Okay, well I wish yep. a good key. Whatever you want. Well, whatever that that you works, want. D. Good jamming. You know, it's funny, you and me are kind of like the roots guys, right? <laughs> yeah. We like hold down roots and bass lines and grooves and That's stuff true. like that. It's kind of fun to. Yeah, yeah, do you go off and do much no. soloing and licks and stuff like that? Very seldom ever. Yeah. I mean, I always like to put licks, I, I like to keep everything in the groove all the time and then every now and then just put something in there to, to, to just get, get to go, oh wow, cool. Because uh, Glenn Hughes used to do that back in, the, back in the early days when Trapeze used to play. He would lay the groove down, it was badass, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he'd just go, do, 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 just out of nowhere, and then he yeah. was done. Yeah. And it was like, whoa. And I, I would just sit and run the record back over and over <laughs> to hear that part. You know, I always liked uh, being into minor, you know, instead of major keys, you know, and I love the half steps, like the harmonic where you raise the seven. Yeah. Right? Then as we started, you know, got Megadeth going, I love that whole half, yeah. the half step and the diminish, which yeah. is what that the devil's triad. Like it's people were reportedly do. beheaded for playing that because it was too evil. Really? Did you ever hear that story? No. Yeah. This, this, which is really just a diminished, right? Yeah. So it's a one, two, three, four, flat five, Right? Wow. Yeah. So now I'm going to hell. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, what got you playing bass and metal? I didn't even know what a bass was. You know, my mom had some Motown records, had a little Beatles <laughs> 45 around the house. She sang in the church choir, you know. and. I would listen to WLS and I'd hear things like Styx, Sweet, Kiss, BTO, Foreigner, and that just appealed to me. And for whatever reason, I heard distorted guitars and I thought that was the bass. So I wanted to get a bass and I got the bass and it's like, that didn't sound like a distorted guitar at all, right? <laughs> I started listening to the Kiss records and I heard, you know, like the beginning of the BTO record. Yeah. Right, that, oh, that yeah. uh, you know, and I was just like, God, there is something so just enchanting and dark about the bass that I loved. Judas Priest was a big uh, corner turning record okay. for me. And just the, the tone of the guitars, the way they played, the way sometimes the bass would da 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 then it was our turn up to bat. How about you? Yeah. What, what's, you know, what, what, what's your history as a bass player and just even as a musician? I could go forever on it because it's, it's a long history, but I mean, the day I remember hearing music, I heard the bass. For me, listening to music, it was, it was a lot of soul music. I grew up in Chicago where, where the blues thing was happening, so my cousins would come home with all these blues records or they'd come home with Little Richard or Chuck Berry or even Elvis and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden I heard a whole lot of love. Yeah. 
And when I heard that, it immediately sounded like Booker T and the MGs. The bass and guitar lines played together right. because Booker T did that in soul music, and that was always my favorite thing. So when I heard Hendrix and Led Zeppelin, and all of a sudden in the 70s, every riff was the guitar and the bass playing, yeah. I was in. And I remember uh, uh, there's a song by Buddy Miles uh, called Joe Tex. I remember playing. And when I did that, I immediately hopped up, the bass fell on the floor, and I jumped around like a kid who had just won the lottery. The first picture I saw of Jimmy Page with that, that the, his Les Paul right there, yeah. I went, and the strap, the little skinny strap, yeah. I yeah. went and got me a leather strap that big. I've been wearing them ever since for the last 30 years I've been wearing them, and my bass is on my knee. And it's just, it's the coolest look. And every time I lift it up, I go, I don't look right. It's got to bring yeah, it back it's down. it's got to be that. You know, and you know what, playing with a pick kind of allows that too. Well, like when I'm in the studio doing music, I have to sit down and play because this is where this is where you're at. This is where it sets up. Yeah, yeah this is where sure. it sets. But when I stand up, I cannot. I can't stand up and play because of my arm. My hand gets tired of doing this. It's it's like there. Dude, that's a long arm. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you got long arms. And you so, almost, you yeah, almost have to have it down here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I'm not ac as accurate down there as I am up there. Right. Yeah, for sitting right, down right, and recording, right. and I think probably most people that are in the studio all the time, if you stand up and you're back there like rocking, they'll probably be like, what's wrong with this guy? Right. When's right. the real bass player showing up, right? <laughs> but you know, you gotta be you gotta be cool on stage. It's important. Yeah. You gotta be cool on stage, but you gotta be accurate in the studio. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, so you didn't bring your eight string or your twelve string, right? Yeah, well see, you know, the twelve string and the eight string sounds a lot like the four string and after our fourth album I use the four string almost all the time, but everybody still thinks I use a 12 string. What sounded like an eight and a 12 string, you just had like the, what, probably the SVT kind of tone, right? Yeah, like on the Dogman record, I had SVT wide open and a boogie guitar head for the high end, because I run two amps. You're growing up a Cheap Trick fan, of course. You Tom know Peterson, I was, I grew up in Chicago. Right, right, man. I mean, so. I got so, to play a 12 string, that's why I got one. Did you? You know, me and Frank Bella just did some songs too, that we wrote specifically for Frank our Metal Masters yeah. clinics, you know, that Harky does. I said, dude, bring your eight string out, because sometimes eight strings they kind of have they sound like somewhere across between a 12 string guitar and like a glockenspiel or a I say a strat and a bass strat and a bass that's, yeah that's it, it adds that extra yeah. regular that clarity right yeah. and and it turns out we would pick that bass up and I would be like you know what I need to do like a soul like a yeah. right do these little licks and all of a sudden you do it with an eight string it like filled in and was so cool Whenever we would want to do bass legs, like, you know, all of a sudden you have these like nice little, nice little tones, chimey things. Yeah. It sounded better you, than just a four you, string. You should do uh, harmonics too. On my twelve, I always go. Right. Right. When you when you do when you do that with a twelve yeah. string or an eight string, the harmony. When you hit that one, the whole amp just goes. <laughs> it's really cool. I always do a, I do a little solo when we do a, a song called Pray For Me right at the beginning of on my 12 string right. and I always end up with that one harmonic. And yeah. It's just like it, it all, everything just, it, there's so many different tones there, yeah. it, your ears go back and forth. Did you ever get into doing any of the, where you pick, you basically, you're, you're, you're what, an octave above mm -hmm. the note? No, I, I've never done that. I've always just been the guy that stays here. And I'll do that for 20 minutes. It's yeah. working for you. Yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> I, I, I would rather play bass and sing. I love to stand in front of my rig and play that, like the Santana thing. That I'll do that for 20 minutes. Yeah. And let everybody yeah. dance around me. And that's the fun of it, when, right. when you know that you're controlling the band. Because the bass will control the band if you, if you do it right. Sure. So I, I, I just love to just sit back and just do that one note and let everybody get used to it and, until they're all done, then I'll just go somewhere else and I'll everybody go, okay, let's go. It's interesting, you know, you being usually in one guitar bands and, and yeah. your tone spread the way that it is, you can kind of almost be driving it and let guitars fill in around you. Uh, with two guitars, I felt like my bass wasn't hurt. Yeah. And in the sound, you know, out front, you don't hear the bass because the guitars have to be in there and the voices and the drums and it, I always got buried. So I personally love three piece because I know my tone is going to get hurt. And it's the thing I love about metal is that when the guitars and the bass, everybody just locks in on the riff, you know? Right, you know, yeah. you're, you're just locking in on the riff, and because that's where the heaviness is, uh -huh. you know. But it all depends on who you're playing with. With Ty and Jerry and King's X, it's like it's a marriage, so everything works well. Everybody controls this. Situation. How about with Ray and George? Your new in that band, when we sat down to start uh, working on the record, 
um, the, the conversation led to nobody tells anybody what to do, uh -huh. nobody follows anybody, everybody creates their own little thing wow. and will make it work. And as a result of it, I love everything we've done because I had nothing to do with anything except my own lick, and, or my own playing, and all of us love what each other did. I, I think about pianos where you just play those chords. Yeah. You know, instead of doing the, the bass root with the, 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 the chords, you're doing the bass lines around the thing to make it yeah, sound, yeah, yeah. give it right. dimension. And so I try to do that with my bass with KXM. What do you mean I don't believe in God? There we there you go. go, that's it. Is it? B flat. Uh, or, uh, yeah, sixth fret to fifth dub. Okay. Yeah. 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 Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Wait, wait, is that? Yeah. Yeah, so it's here and here, here. Oh, what's that? What's that, sir? Okay. Nice. What do you mean I don't believe in God? <laughs> I talk to him every day. <laughs> what do you mean I don't support the system? I go to work, right? Is that right? <laughs> what do you mean I don't pay my taxes? <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that was pretty good. That's close. I love and, that. And I love that song. It's funny because you're in drop D, uh -huh. right? You're dropped, and I'm on a five string. Yeah. So one way or another, we'll make it work here. I've never could get used to five strings. I just can't. You know what's funny? I started using the five string. We did the Rust in Peace album. Mm -hmm. We did a song. It needed to be down here, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to. <laughs> right? You know? Just, That's what I do. Right? And then. You know, there you go. Right? And then when I got to the second half of the tune. Wow. Punch. And then, and then I recorded the back half of it, but the tuned up. And so how do you do it live? Well, then I had, then I realized we had to go on tour and play the song. <laughs> right? So I called up Jackson, who I was playing their four-string instruments at the time. I said, SOS, I need a bass. And so we basically created a five-string. Just made a really wide neck, took a P-bass pickup like yours, and we just split it farther apart. To pick it up, and and so it was really just kind of this poor man's yeah. Well, I mean, it's a four string turned into a five wild string, west right? pioneer, man. You know, yeah. So you know, I only played it really for that one song. Then the next record, Countdown to Extinction, we started adding, and sometimes it was just simple things like being able to low and land on that low. Sometimes Dave will go down and hit these two strings open, which on a guitar creates kind of a D chord, and so I could kind of match that. And then over the years, I just started going, well, I have it here, and I'm a bass player. I should probably really learn how to play. And, and I realized the trick with five string, it's, it's the technique, because if you're up here, you can really grind, but you can't, you can't do that down here. So it's, it's a touch thing, and it's a touch. Right? So it's, you can't be thumping that thing as loud. Um, these babies help. These, you know, these big 810s and the right power. So your music and your approach determines the equipment that is best for you. You know, my idols were playing SVTs and yeah. P basses and stuff. And then when it's my turn up to bat with Megadeth, I realized that is not, that tone just does not work for me. You know, a lot of bass players don't uh, uh, think about tone and all that kind of stuff. They just plug in and play. And yeah. it's good to hear, the, you know, the theory, because I've got mine too, you know, we all. It's, it's, it's our instrument, it's our voice. It's not just something in the background, but I, I remember Mr. Bulbous when we did that record, we did it in drop B. What's that tuning? What's drop B? Like it's, how uh, far? So no, your so four string be is... B, E, I forgot the other two, but it's like taking everything down five steps. Good Lord. You know what I mean? I'm able to just kind of shred. I can't even think that fast. I can't sing that high anymore. You know what? You drop it down another half step. We're dropped down to C. B, here we come. 